Welcome to Deciphering Digital Security. In this episode, we're looking at cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is generally perceived as being the most prevalent web application vulnerability. Part of the reason for this is that people don't understand the potential risk posed by this type of bug. You'll often see cross-site scripting referred to as XSS. Cross-site scripting is usually categorized as either reflective or persistent, and it works by executing malicious content in the context of a trusted application. Let's start off by taking a look at reflective cross-site scripting. Welcome to the Vonco Employee Management System. This is a purposefully vulnerable web app that has been put together to demonstrate web application vulnerabilities. Let's take a look at this employee profile page. At the top of the page is a fairly typical search function, which lets you search for a specific employee. So if we do a quick search for Robert, we'll see some results that come back for an employee called Robert. Because we had a valid match, we see a lot of useful information about Robert in the employee details page. However, what's most interesting to me as a pen tester is the fact that my search term has been returned to me in the body of the page. This suggests that there could be a cross-site scripting vector, but because this was a valid search, I want to try a search that I know won't yield any results to make sure this app behaves in the same way. So out goes Robert and in goes Blah. Sure enough, the app executes in the same way and Blah is printed back to us on the search results page. Because this term is coming from me, the user, we consider this to be untrusted input. Let's take things further. I'm going to try adding some JavaScript into the search box. If this application is poorly coded, it won't filter out the script tags and we'll have a cross-site scripting scenario. I'm going to enter some JavaScript to make a pop-up box appear within the context of our page. By the way, if cross-site scripting is the most prevalent web application vulnerability, this is the most prevalent proof of concept. With my JavaScript alert code in the search box, I hit the button. And there you have it. The application has failed to sanitize the untrusted input, which in this case included some JavaScript. As a result, the browser assumes the code is part of the web app and executes it as such. So let's recap how that happened. Our untrusted search term was printed directly back into the markup for the search results page by the application. The string was not sanitized by the application, that is to say, stripped of any unwanted input, such as HTML script tags. This gives an attacker a vector to embed malicious code, which, as far as the browser is concerned, is part of the trusted application. And you may be thinking, surely we triggered that by searching for the term ourselves, so we could only impact our own experience with this method. Well, to target a victim, the same technique could also be leveraged by using a crafted URL, with the JavaScript already in the search parameter, as shown below. The URL could then be distributed in a phishing email. This is a classic reflective cross-site scripting attack vector. Now let's take a look at persistent cross-site scripting. In this example, we're going to use a form that stores data in a database. This form creates a new entry in the staff table. What if our untrusted input here is not sanitized before it's sent to the database and printed back to us? Let's try embedding the same JavaScript code into our job title field. Because our input is stored in a database using structured query language, we need to make a minor adjustment to escape the single tick, as this is a reserved character in SQL. We go ahead and add our JavaScript job title to the database. As we return to the master list of employees, the JavaScript executes right away in a very similar fashion to the earlier reflective example. However, here is the difference. If we leave this page and return to it, the JavaScript will execute all over again. This is what makes it a persistent cross-site scripting bug. Notice how once we acknowledge the alert, the rest of the page loads properly. So if this was a more stealthy piece of code, we'd be able to do other things without detection. More on this later. In this persistent cross-site scripting example, we fed our untrusted data into the application via a form. It wasn't sanitized on the way in or out of the application. As a result, every time the data is called, the code gets executed by the browser. Let's take this even further and look at stealing cookies using cross-site scripting. HTTP is a stateless protocol, so we use cookies to store session information, so a web server can keep track of who it's talking to. Therefore, if you can steal a session cookie, you can hijack a session. Exploiting a cross-site scripting bug is a great way to steal cookies. Here's how. As we log into an application, we'll normally supply a username and password. 
After authenticating us, our application will return with a session cookie containing a session ID. Every subsequent request we make to the application will have that session cookie included, so the web application knows we're authorised to make those requests. When we have an application with a cross-site scripting bug, we can embed code that will force a request to be sent to another server. However, because that code is in the markup of the original web application, the browser will send all cookies associated with this original app. An attacker can then capture those cookies and their contents. Let's see this in action. On the left of the screen, you can see our victim application. On the right, you can see the tail end of our attacker's web server logs. We're going to use a persistent cross-site scripting bug to embed some JavaScript that will send our session cookie over to our attacker's web server. We'll then be able to see the results in the logs. I'm going to paste in the code for now, but I'll display it at the end for clarity. The way this code works is by calling a supposed image that exists on the attacker's server. Of course, this image doesn't really exist. It's just a way to get the browser to make a request. The code actually tells the browser to request a URL that includes the dynamic value of the session cookie. When we submit our form, the code is executed because we return to the main profile page. We can see right away that in the attacker's server logs we have a valid session ID from the application. Because this is a persistent cross-site scripting bug, every subsequent time we load a page that contains this code, the session ID is silently sent to our attacker. Here is the code I embedded to make this call to our attacking server. It's pretty simple, but the impact this little piece of code has is massive for the security of our app. So how do we prevent cross-site scripting? First of all, it's vital that all untrusted input is sanitized to make sure it doesn't contain anything unexpected, such as HTML tags. In much the same vein, never directly output any untrusted input. HTTP only is a special flag that when set on a cookie tells a browser never to send the cookie to a domain outside of the domain that set it. Use this always on session cookies. We just looked at examples of reflective and persistent cross-site scripting. We then looked at cookie stealing using cross-site scripting. Finally, we looked at some tips on cross-site scripting prevention.